Section 10.6, Games of Strategy. In a two-person zero-sum matrix game, the term zero-sum means that in each play of the game, the positive gain of one player is equal to the negative gain or loss of the other player. The term matrix game is used to describe a two-person game in which each player has only a finite number of moves so that all possible outcomes of each play and the corresponding gains of the players can be displayed in tabular or matrix form. In a general game of this type, let's let player R have M possible moves and let player C have N possible moves. In a play of the game, each player makes one of his or her possible moves, and then a payoff is made from player C to player R depending on the moves. For I equals 1 through N and J equals 1 through N, let us set AIJ equal to the payoff that player C makes to player R if player R makes move I and player C makes move J. If an entry AIJ is negative, we mean that player C receives a payoff of AIJ from player R, the absolute value of AIJ, that is. We arrange these MN possible payoffs in the form of an N by N matrix. It's given by this A right over here, and which we call the payoff matrix of the game. Each player is to make his or her moves on a probabilistic basis. In the general case, we make the following definitions. PIJ is the probability that player R makes move I, QJ is the probability that player C makes move J. With the probabilities PI and QJ, we form two vectors, P and Q. We call the row vector P the strategy of player R, and the column vector Q the strategy of player C. If we multiply each possible payoff by its corresponding probability and sum over all possible payoffs, we obtain the expression A11, P1Q1, plus A12, P1Q2, and so on, all the way through AMN, PMQN. This is a weighted average of the payoffs to player R called the expected payoff to player R. We denote this expected payoff by EPQ to emphasize the fact that it depends on the strategies of the two players. From the definition of the payoff matrix A and the strategies P and Q, it can be verified that we may express the expected payoff in matrix notation as EPQ equals P times A times Q. Because EPQ is the expected payoff to player R, it follows that minus PQ is the expected payoff to player C, because it's a zero-sum game. So as an example, let's consider the following carnival-type game, where each player has a stationary wheel with a movable pointer on it, as in the figure. We will call player R's wheel the row wheel, and player C's wheel the column wheel. The row wheel is divided into three sectors, numbered 1, 2, and 3. So here we go, 1, 2, and 3. Meanwhile, the column wheel is divided into four sectors, numbered 1, 2, 3, and 4. The fractions of the area occupied by the various sectors are indicated in the figure. See these fractions. So to play the game, each player spins the pointer of his or her wheel and lets it come to rest at random. The number of the sector in which each pointer comes to rest is called the move of that player. Depending on the move each player makes, player C then makes a payment of money to player R according to table 1. So player R makes some sort of move, 1, 2, or 3, and then depending on player C's move, player C ends up uh, paying player R some money. So in the case that it's negative, player R pays uh, player C. Let's find the expected payoff to player R. So we'll use our formula, E P Q is equal to P times A times Q. So let's see, for P, we have 1 6, 1 3rd, and uh, 1 half. So that'll be our row matrix, 1 6, 1 3rd, one half for P, then we have to multiply by A. So A is just this matrix right over here. So that'll be three, five, minus two, minus one, minus two, four, minus three, minus four, six, minus five, zero, three, and then multiply that by Q. So for Q, we have 1 fourth, 1 fourth, 1 third, 1 6. So let's write that out. 1 fourth, 1 fourth, 1 third, 
and 1 6. So using a calculator, we multiply these matrices and we get 13 over 72, which is equal to 0 0.1805. So that means that the expected uh, payoff to player R is approximately 18 cents per play. Next up, we have the fundamental theorem of zero-sum games, which states that there exist strategies P star and Q star such that E of P star Q is greater than or equal to E P star Q star, which is greater than or equal to E P Q star for all strategies P and Q. If P star and Q star are strategies such that this is true for all strategies P and Q, then we call P star an optimal strategy for player R and we call Q star an optimal strategy for player C, and V equals E P star Q star is called the value of the game. An entry ARS in a payoff matrix A is called a saddle point if ARS is the smallest entry in its row and ARS is the largest entry in its column. A game whose payoff matrix has a saddle point is called strictly determined. If a matrix has a saddle point ARS, it turns out that the following strategies are optimal strategies for the two players. The rth entry for P star should be one, the rest of the uh, entries should be zero. And for similarly for Q star, the Sth entry should be one. That is an optimal strategy for player R is to always make the rth move. And an optimal strategy for player C is to always make the Sth move. Such strategies for which only one move is possible are called pure strategies, and strategies for which more than one move is possible are called mixed strategies. So as an example, let's say there's two competing television networks, R and C, and they're scheduling one-hour programs in the same time period. Network R can schedule one of three possible programs, and network C can schedule one of four possible programs. Neither network knows which program the other will schedule. Both networks ask the same outside polling agency to give them an estimate of how all possible pairings of the programs will divide the viewing audience. The agency gives them each table two, whose IJth entry is the percentage of the viewing audience that will watch network R if network R's program I is paired against network C's program J. What program should each network schedule in order to maximize its viewing audience? Notice they gave us an audience percentage table we don't have a payoff matrix, so we need to generate one. How about we assume that each of the network's uh, program starts with 50% viewership. So in that case, if this audience percentage is 60 and they start with 50% viewership, then that means that the payoff would be 10% to R for this case, where they both error program one, because I just subtracted 50. So uh, in this case, if they both started with 50% and now it's at 20, that means that R lost 30. So I'll subtract 50 and I'll just keep doing that. I'll subtract 50 from each uh, entry and I'll get my payoff matrix. So 0, 25, minus 5, 10, 20, minus 5, minus 15, minus 20. So this is basically the matrix that shows uh, how everything would change starting at 50-50. Okay, so that means that we have a saddle point right over here where this minus 5 is, right? Because that's the smallest entry in this second row and it's the largest entry in this third column. Great. So a two, three, equal to negative five is a saddle point. And therefore, R should schedule program two for the second row and C should schedule program three. 
those would be the optimal strategies. Okay, so we have another theorem that says that the optimal strategy is for a 2x2 two two matrix game. For a 2x2 two two matrix game that is not strictly determined, optimal strategies for player R and C are a little bit complicated. We have A22 two two minus A21 divided by A11 plus A22 minus A12 minus A21 in the first column. And the second column is A11 minus A12 over A11 plus A22 minus A12 minus A21. To see why this is true, you can take uh, E of PQ, or rather compute E of uh, PQ, and then you can rearrange terms a little bit to try to get uh, a zero for the P1 term. So by uh, doing that, you know, you have to multiply through the matrix A, where you have um, all these coefficients come in, and it turns out that if we set P1 equal to this, then it will cancel other terms, and it'll result in P1 being zero, and so it's a good strategy to set this to be our uh, first entry, and then similarly, we can deduce these entries and the rest of them, but it's a little bit of work, so we'll take it for granted. In any case, let's uh, apply this theorem to an example where we have the uh, federal government desiring to inoculate its citizens against a certain flu virus. The virus has two strains, and the proportions in which the two strains occur in the virus population is not known. Two vaccines have been developed, and each citizen is given only one of them. Vaccine 1 is 85% effective against strain 1 and 70% effective against strain 2. Vaccine 2 is 60% effective against strain 1 and 90% effective against strain 2, what inoculation policy should the government adopt? Okay, so let's make our uh, little uh, matrix with the uh, vaccine. And that'll be 1 or 2, and we need uh, strains. And we could have strain 1 or strain 2. So it's 85% for uh, vaccine one against strain one, 70 for two, 60 for two against one, and 90 against two. So then let's compute P1 star. So that'll be equal to A22 minus A21 over A11 plus A22 minus A12 minus A21, which is equal to 0.90 minus 0.60 over 0.85 uh, plus 0.90 minus 0.70 minus 0 0.60, and that's equal to 0 0.30 over 0.45, which is 2 thirds. Let's get P2 star. So that's 1 minus P1 star. So that's just 1 minus 2 thirds, which is 1 third. Okay, so now let's get Q1 star. That'll be A22 two two minus A12 over A11 one one plus A22 two two minus A12 minus A21. So that's 0 0.90 minus 0 0.70 over 0 0.85 plus 0 0.90 minus 0 0.70 minus 0 0.60, which is 0 0.20 over 0.45, and that's 4 ninths. So then we'll compute Q2 star similarly as 1 minus Q1 star, oops, and that's 1 minus 4 ninths, which is 5 ninths. Okay, let's find the value of the game, which is A11 plus A22 minus A12, A21 over A11 
plus a22 minus a12 minus a21. So that's 0 0.85, 0 0.90, minus 0 0.70, 0 0.60, over 0 0.85 plus 0 0.90 minus 0 0.70 minus 0 0.60, which is 0.345 over 0.45, and that's 0.76666, and so on. So let's uh, interpret these results. This is saying that our, or the government's optimal strategy is to inoculate two-thirds of the population with vaccine one and one-third with vaccine two. 